Hello, hello. Today is March 30th, 2023. And the word of the day is alchemize. And I was being very creative. Like I was in my writing space and I feel like writing is one of my gifts, but it I have to slow down so much in order to oh, draft my card in order to write and it I have to like be in a different kind of space to listen to the words that want to come through and be able to place them on the paper in a way that I feel is best. And so with this word, with this word alchemization, I was thinking, you know, I usually say affirmation and I'm playing with the inner child concept. And it's like when we become adults, we lose that innocent, loving, truth-telling child from a place of purity because it's like kind of washed out through us. It's, it's like we're not allowed to say the truth from an innocent place place from a perspective from a place of where we can actually have a dialogue about to philosophize and of course I'm a Sagittarius so like philosophy and philosophizing about like uh an issue I find very interesting it's kind of like trying to uh solve an equation and I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Goodwill Hunting, but in Goodwill Hunting, he was able to solve the equation where the other students couldn't. And it he wasn't even in college. He was like the um the janitor, I believe. And so, but if we don't philosophize, if we just like we don't want to hurt somebody's feelings, then we're doing a disservice to ourselves and to others and growth as a global consciousness, if you will. And as I was writing, I decided to give my inner child a role, like where my inner child can play with me in my work in that it can check my sentences to where they don't feel right, where my ego is more in there than unconditional love, like a a pure, pure channel download to the best of my ability with where I'm at. And, um, and so it's usually like a feeling, a nudge. So, or I'll ask my inner child to check this sentence. And Another way that I decided that I want my inner child to get to participate in my life and to bring that fun aspect to our manifestations is instead of affirmations, I want to use casting spells because as children, we really believed in magic. And the key word is we believed in magic. And I felt like casting spells brought about a more fun and exciting way to manifest. And so with the word alchemization, the, 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 the spell that I came up with is I now alchemize all that I am experiencing By commanding the spirit of unconditional love within me. I am alchemizing. I am now alchemizing all of my experiences 
by commanding the spirit of unconditional love within me. That was my spell. So I want to alchemize everything into unconditional love. Because if I believe that unconditional love is the only thing that's here, there is no judgment. There is no uh, lack, limitation, and worth issues or value issues. Because when there's unconditional love, you get to, it's like unconditional love allows you to have what you want. There is no conditions concerning your worth or your value. It's more like you want this, you get to have it. And that's how I see manifestation. And so, but if our emotions, like if we're, we're feeling like the feeling, um, those lacks, those limitations, those fears, we are vibrating at that. We're feeling that into our environment. We're feeling into that manifestation to come about in some form or another. But when we are alchemizing, alchemizing everything into unconditional love, we see with different eyes and our circumstances, whatever whatever the event is, whatever we are experiencing in our reality. And since all our real, realities are different, we, we, okay. So all the feelings are the same, but our experiences are different. So fear is fear is fear, no matter where you're from right? Love is love is love. No matter where you're from, everybody knows a smile. A smile is a smile, no matter where you're at in the world. And so when you see your life from a place of unconditional love, you are able to be in truth and see things how they are, not how the ego mind, if you will, fear, uh, judgment, anger, resentment, anything really that's not on a higher frequency. And so in order to get into, into a higher frequency, you alchemize all of that with unconditional love. And that's something that is, can be summoned from within us. And so those are the two things about the inner child. I'm curious to see how you will allow your inner child to be present in your life with where you're at today. Like, where can they participate? Where can they be a part of what you're creating, what you're living, because these parts of us really, we need them to be whole and complete. And it lets your child, if you've experienced abandonment or, you know, the different ar array of negativities right some people have experienced like they they're not allowed to speak they're not allowed to play they're not allowed to do different things right like every child grows up different and it's so it's like well what what would your inner child love to learn and so that's just something that I thought I wanted to bring up since I was working on it, I wanted to share it with you because I 
want to be a well-rounded person and not like, you know, shut my inner child out with like no play, no creativity, you know, like she doesn't get to have fun. She doesn't get to express herself. She doesn't, you know, like that is not going to work if you want to be like all aspects of yourself, like you have to uh, honor that part of you that perhaps went through so much trauma and wants to hide and doesn't want to come out. And so we got to create outlets for the inner child to have a place in our adult lives. And there was a lot more that I was creating, but I thought this is relevant in, in like, you can still use affirmations if you like. Um, but I'm going to start saying casting spells because to me, it represents magic and wonder and fun and believing and imagination and all those amazing things that we get busy about our lives and forget about that are really, really important to embody and bring forth in our daily life. And so the card of the day is five of swords. And we've seen this card before, but today I kind of want to take it from a place of boundaries and so with boundaries this card for some reason I thought about boundaries and boundaries to me are things that like I believe in for example uh it's one thing to have like a drink at the restaurant and you've been there for like you know your toxicity level is low you've been there for a while you only had one drink um, and you drive home and your alcohol level is below like the toxic level of driving. However, my boundary would be if you get drunk in a way to where you're just stumbling, that's a boundary for me. Or another boundary would be like, if someone had an open container while we were driving, I would not want to ride with them. These are my values, my personal boundaries. And so what I was thinking, what I was getting from this card, it's like, stand your ground and your boundaries, and you will stand in your power because if you feel like that's what's right for you, <clears throat> excuse me, that is right for you. Another person doesn't have to agree with that. And in that, you'll be standing up for yourself. And, you know, what's right, what you feel is right within you, what you are not going to budge around. And my why is like, well, you're putting yourself at harm and you're putting other people at harm. And so like, that's not okay with me. And so, and not only that, it's like when you set your boundaries, you actually get to see who really respects your boundaries and who doesn't and you get to decide whether they get to be in your life and how much right and if someone loves you like or someone uh, okay let me think how do I want to say this
like I believe in free will, like people should be able to do whatever they want as long as it doesn't hurt other people. Like, okay, so they want to hurt themselves, that's fine. But they, the minute they put other people's lives at jeopardy, that's where I have an issue. I mean, I do have an issue even when they harm themselves. However, I truly believe in free will. And because like that to me is like a sacred gift that we all have that we can choose to use however we want. Like even God won't take away our free will. Spirit won't take away our free will no matter what. We are free agents. We are sovereign beings. And so to choose to do the loving thing, the right thing is a free will. And, and that's like the world we live in, right? Like that's reality. Now we do have laws and stuff like that. However, we all, we all know that those don't always protect, you know, the innocent. And so I feel that I'm going to do my best job to be cautious to, uh, if I'm doing something, you know, because I'm going through something, whatever that is, I'm going to let it be only affect me and do my best not to have it affect other people to me that's like i don't know social awareness or social responsibility taking personal responsibility for who you are and who like who i am and so like having boundaries based on what we're okay with and what we're not okay with and standing our ground will defeat will always win You'll always win. There's nothing like, you know, I guess why I'm saying this is because like, I feel that people like me included have bended my boundaries for whatever reason. And, but we don't stand in our power and we don't stand in knowing who we are and what we stand for if we don't stand for our boundaries and we don't communicate our boundaries it's not like it has to be like ugly but it has to be like firm and so you show people like what you really stand for so they have a clear picture of who you are and so I think that's all I have for you tonight. Um, have a great evening wherever you're at. And I will check in with you and see you tomorrow. Bye.